And we have some very special guests here to talk to us a little bit more about it. We have our special guest, Brian and Audra Bay. Hey. <laughs> so tonight we have a lot of information for you. We're going to be talking about building healthy relationships. What does unhealthy relationships look like? And how does this affect our relationship with God? So we're going to get right into it. Can you guys tell us a little bit more about the new world? Well, the theme building course is a take on the word on the phrase building relationships. Um, the term cause when it comes to relationship is taken from the, the um want to say Ephesians. <laughs> but it's actually from Ecclesiastes chapter four. Um, and it talks about a threefold cord that, that will not easily be broken. Um, the Bible is talking about relationships and relationship with our fellow man and how it's advantageous that we have relationships with our fellow man because it will help us. It, the Bible talks about it provides heat. Um, the Bible talks about how it it will make you strong, easier to defend. You 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 are harder to attack, harder to bring down when you have relationships. Um, even in the beginning, God said it's not good for man to be alone, and He mm -hmm. meant that from a marital standpoint, mm -hmm. but He also meant that from a relational standpoint with our fellow men. Mm -hmm. Because many of us forget, we figure we can do this all on our own, be good. But the my, Almighty God, when He said, when Jesus was talking and saying the two greatest commandments, mm -hmm. He said, they are this love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, all of that. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. He, 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 in that second commandment, there, it, there's a lot to unpack. It's, it's, it's a lot heavily relational, mm -hmm. as relational to oneself and relational to our fellow man. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we, we are good with um, being to ourselves, you know, the, the quote-unquote introverts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but even introverts need people. Yeah. We are built to be social beings. Yes. And there, there are some people who are extroverts who are here, there, and everywhere, building and attaching to people, but they don't know themselves. Right. So they end up atta um, having toxic relationships because the Bible says a threefold chord, which means you as one person, another person, and God tied together can is not easily broken but if you are a chord and you 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 part of this three chords you the next person and god and if you as an if you are not sound if you are not a sound chord right. if you don't know yourself right. you you can easily be broken because the equation is not three a threefold chord yeah. it's a defective chord plus mm -hmm. two chords mm -hmm. or if you have if you 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 your, your relationship with people is strained, then your relationship with people, you have that the defective part of, of the equation. Right. And if your relationship with people is good, but your relationship with God is bad, that's still defective. Yes. So we come to deal with all three parts of the model. Wow, that's good. And I love that you talked about in the beginning, God saying it is not good for man to be alone. Because I feel like culture has shifted it a bit. Mm -hmm. We have this savage culture. Like if you do something to me, I'm you off. You off right mm -hmm. now. We've totally done away with yeah. the love my neighbor as myself. So I want to know, is there a correlation between healthy relationships and you as a person being healthy? Is it connected? Definitely. Um, you, you can't separate both mm -hmm. because one of the things, I, and I can speak about my personal life. Mm -hmm. I know there was a point as a, as a, a teen coming into a young adult mm -hmm. When you know you're still trying to find yourself, mm -hmm. um, you would have been burnt a few times, mm -hmm. and then you 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 figure okay, well that's that's the total sum of people. Right. So then you put up this wall, mm -hmm. and you figure everybody is the same way. Yeah. So I had to understand that because I was not healthy and I was still hurt from mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. stuff, things that would have happened, it trickles on into you know different relationships persons that would have been coming in and persons that the lord would have been sending wow. sending in my life to actually be a blessing to my life wow. so instead of actually receiving them mm -hmm. and receiving the blessing that they came to bring mm -hmm. i did more harm and good to it so i i kind of got that lesson pretty quick though and, and the lord didn't allow me to sit there and i i recognized why mm -hmm. it was because i've always been called to be with people as wow. introverted as I am. Wow. Archer, you oh, are an introvert. <laughs> Listen, my husband can tell you. Wow. My husband can tell you that he would be the one. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I need to go out. I need to go out. <laughs> I'm like, I, I could. You can right. go. I'll stay home. Right. I'm, not, I'm that kind of person. I, I, once I would have given, I just pull right in. And it's not intentional. Right. It's not that I have anything on, anything wrong. Right. I love, I love you. I love people. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I just 
done. Right. I just want nothing else to say. I want nothing else to do. So <laughs> I just withdraw in a shell. I wow. naturally do that. Wow. So when I because I didn't understand mm -hmm. me coming up mm -hmm. at, at that point in my age in my life, it took me a minute. Mm -hmm. it took me a minute to get it. But once I finally got it, I understood that people were bringing and adding, coming to add to me. Right. And there were some that were toxic. Mm -hmm. But I was able to recognize the toxic one and also recognize the ones that came to add into me. Wow. So it helped me to be healthy. Right. A healthy whole individual. Mm -hmm. And then once the healthy people like him came, right. I was able to receive oh. them without a problem. <laughs> 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 like that it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> check points, you're a check one. <laughs> so what would you say if I'm if I'm a person and I'm Audra 10, 15, 20 years ago, how long mm -hmm. it was? How do I get over that hurt and that pain and get to a place of health so that I can allow those God-sent relationships mm -hmm. into my life? I would say first and foremost, be honest with where you are. Wow. That's good. Be honest with where you are. Um, I wasn't honest for a very long time of how much some things hurt to the core of me. Mm -hmm. That I just kept covering it and covering it, covering it. Mm -hmm. But I, I had a deliverance moment. Mm -hmm. Literally a deliverance moment. And Holy Spirit showed me me. Showed me my scars, showed me the years of hurt, showed me where I would have erred in the hurt, mm -hmm. and then also showed me where I would have neglected persons he would have been trying to send to me to help wow. heal. Wow. So I would say be honest with where you are. Mm -hmm. After being honest with where you are, you need to find someone you trust and who you can confide in. Mm -hmm. You have to become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It ain't no way going around it. Yeah. Becoming vulnerable allows the first the place of you to be open up so that you can you can be seen. Mm -hmm. You have to give people room. Right. People will hurt you. We are yeah. human. Right. We will hurt you, but it's our job not to stay there. Right. We're supposed to be mature enough to get up and have a discussion mm -hmm. that you know, okay, this is what you did or said that mm -hmm. um, that hurt. Right. Um, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. They don't feel good. I mean, mm -hmm. let's move on from it. Communicate. Communicate that thing. Right. So, um, be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be vulnerable with someone. Find that one person. Mm -hmm. And then once you would have done that, ensure that you go to the maker and allow him to go in and heal that place. Wow. That's really Let good. him breathe his breath on it. Wow. Let him um, take that, open up that word. Let him show you some scriptures that would be healing mm -hmm. to where the hurt came from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some hurts our family. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some hurts are stuff that we even ain't call on ourselves. Right. Generational stuff that yeah. we walk into. And you can't true. figure out, okay, why am I feeling like this? Mm. Some stuff that we carry from our parents. Yes. Um, far, far behind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you need to know this kind of things. And yes. having that honesty and having being open, being vulnerable, having mm -hmm. that person who can walk you through this is, is, is key and important. And allow the Holy Spirit to come in and breathe on that and, and put his word on that mm -hmm. to heal that more. Wow, that's, that's really good. And I love that you said that even with you um, having people around you that God would have sent, people are still human. Yeah. yeah. So how do we maintain healthy relationships in our lives once we've gotten out of that fairy tale mindset that people are supposed to be perfect? perfect. How do we maintain the healthy relationships in our lives? Well, I think you have the evaluation of, of even the relationship is important. Mm -hmm. Is this person doing things out of maliciousness, mm -hmm. which is which is malice and intent to harm, right. or is this person just making mistakes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or is this just, or this moment is a mistake moment? Right. Or is this a, a malicious moment? Mm -hmm. Or is this could be a making moment? Because mm -hmm. sometimes some moments uh, are, are there just to make you more mature, make both of you mature, yes. make the friendship mature, more mm -hmm. mature. Um, because we get to understand and we talk it out and we get to know each other better yeah. and we get to know ourselves better even yes. from bouncing things off other people. Right. So you don't have to know if this is a malicious moment right. or is this a, 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 a mistake, yes. a momentary mistake, mm -hmm. or is this a making moment mm -hmm. where we, where God is just using us to mature us mm -hmm. and to make us better. Um, after you evaluate that, mm -hmm. then you now have to know, okay, what do I need to do now? Right. If it's a malicious moment, now do I evaluate it and say, okay, now this I know how to treat you, treat you mm -hmm. and this relationship needs to cold cut in, mm -hmm. and you know you stay over there, I'll stay over here. Right. Now some relationships you can't cold cut in because mm -hmm. it may be a coworker okay. or it may be in a family member yes. or it's may you know mm -hmm. you have to evaluate and see what relate what what re what relationship the relationship has. Right. You know <laughs> I'm trying to find a better way to say it. But um, to know 
what, what, why did you put this relationship together, Lord? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that me and Jesus Christ drew you up. Right. And I thought you saved the whole world. No, exactly. So yeah. some things you're just going to have to let go. Mm -hmm. And then some things you're going to have to see the maturity in it. Mm -hmm. And you have to move on from mm -hmm. there. Right. But then there's some people who make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to now, okay, am I helping this person walk? First off, do you have to realize, am I enabling this person's mistakes? Mm -hmm. Am I suddenly giving them help and aid mm -hmm. to making these mistakes? Mm -hmm whether or not intentionally mm -hmm. or intentionally. Because sometimes we like to have people, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we, we kind of have people who we always feel we want to feel better than or, yeah, 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 you know, which is even something in us that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. Right. But we need to find out, okay, I'm not, I did nothing to help enable this. I did nothing to help push this mistake on. Mm -hmm. So is this person making this mistake? Is this a continual mm -hmm. and habitual mistake? Right. Or is it a one-time mistake? Because sometimes even in people not having intended to hurt us, mm -hmm. they hurt us, mm -hmm. and they hurt us, and they hurt us, and they hurt us, yeah. right. and they hurt us, and they hurt us, mm -hmm. which is toxic in itself. Right. So, you know, so you know, to evaluate all those things and then evaluate What's your best response to this now? Right. And and you can do that from a place of maturity. Mm -hmm. You can also do that from a place of mentorship. Right. Or just that you need you can find someone right. who's mature enough, mm -hmm. who's been there before, right. and whose maturity you can lean on to make yeah. a, a, a culture decision. Or you can go directly to your maker and say, God, what's this? Yeah. What should I do in this matter? You know what right. I'm saying? Right. 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 So true. Yeah. And Bishop Jake said it well when mm -hmm. he gave us the three levels of I think it's the three levels of relationship mm -hmm. confidant. Um, comrade. comrade and there's something else. I forgot that. I know, but I know, but it's pretty much saying to, right. you need to know where people fit. Yeah. Right. And I think that is one of the big mistakes that we make. We figure that everyone that comes in our life is there forever. It's so true. So you try so to true. put people in a place mm -hmm. whereas, okay, you really, even in your re you have not evaluated yes. the real reason. Right. So when someone pretty much just coming and just passing through, right. just here for a season, right. for a temporary mm -hmm. moment, just here to help you along mm -hmm. with probably a vision that the Lord gave you, probably yeah. a task, mm -hmm. or you may be sent to pour into them, or they likewise pour into you. That may also may be designed to last a year, maybe mm -hmm. two years. But you try to figure out, okay, when the thing starts, you feel it, you know, the, the tension, you try to make it fix mm -hmm. to something that's supposed to last forever right. when it's not designed to be. Right. And then we indirectly get hurt mm -hmm. and we assume everybody right. is that. Exactly. So we need to know what category it is to put people in. Okay. And yeah. know what category the person put you in. Because wow. sometimes I may have you as my confidant. Right. So to you, you know, you're my comrade. We're just along for the ride. Yes. Right. Yes. We're in a deep. Yes. But I have all my eggs in one basket. Yes. You know, and yes. then come to find out that yeah. you, you, you don't sit on that same level. Right. Yeah. So that can be mm -hmm. problematic as well. So you have to know, you have to know within yourself where this person fits and you have to know where this person has you in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to ask. Yeah. Really? It's, it's so how do I ask someone it's, it's something okay like to that? Ask. It's, I believe that if you have someone who you are okay, we can mm -hmm. sit down and talk for details, and I can sit down and I can eat lunch mm -hmm. or dinner with you, mm -hmm. I should be able to say, so what are you saying to me? Same way that you would say that with a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Where do you see us going? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think our relationship purpose mm -hmm. is? Why do you think I'm in your life? Why do you think you're in my life? Right. I think we just need to be mature enough mm -hmm. And that's a mature place right. to be able to ask those kind of questions. Right, I was about to say, it takes real maturity yeah, to, yeah. Have kind of to have that kind of conversation and to be ready for the answer. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 So you don't no really want to right. And that's the thing, mm -hmm. just just be okay with the truth of it because yeah. it saves years. That's true. And frustration mm -hmm. off of you where you, right. where you figure in and you're trying to figure this thing out, you're mm -hmm. trying to make it something that it's not. Wow. And you take that pressure off of you, mm -hmm. and that's that's less pain on your heart. That's so true. We say it sometimes. Yeah. So what happens if maybe I would have categorized a person strong, and I realize that now this relationship is toxic mm -hmm. and it's unhealthy? How do I climb myself out of that? What are some tips? What can I do to get out of that toxic relationship? Well, um, first off, we talked about evaluation. You have to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you have to now, after you evaluate it, mm -hmm. you have to now make your steps. Right. Okay, um, if did I see this, is there a toxic relationship? Yeah. And I need to get out of this. Right. First off, you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. that this is a relationship. Right. And it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. If you need to make an exit out of it, it's mm -hmm. going to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt you. Yes. 
at some level it's gonna hurt because yeah. the person came into your life yeah. and and you you had you had ties. Right. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. But now you 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 come to a place where mm-hmm. it needs to be, you know, dealt with mm-hmm. toxically. Mm-hmm. Um dealt with a toxic relationship, now you have to say, okay, I'm gonna cut, it's gonna hurt, so I'm gonna have to brace myself and be ready for it. Right. And when you with you being honest with yourself, um you're not gonna you're less likely to slide back into right. the toxic relationship. Right. Toxic um whether it be a, a romantic relationship, mm-hmm. whether it be a friendship relationship, yeah. where or even a business relationship that's toxic. Yes. You know, because mm-hmm. there are ties involved in the, the the relationship. Right. So now to pull that apart, mm-hmm. it's gonna take some separate and it's gonna take effort. We all are. To pull yeah. apart, it's mm-hmm. gonna take effort. You mm-hmm. can't just say, okay, it took effort to establish a relationship, right. so it's gonna take effort. To, to come out of it mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's really good. It, and, it takes effort. And I think one of the myths, myths that we have in the church is getting help, professional help. Mm. There are some things that are just beyond us yes. alone. Yes. You need reinforcement. Yes. We have some amazing psychiatrists mm-hmm. that are Christians yes. that can help you and they, they, they tie scripture in with, mm-hmm. with their, the knowledge that they have. Right. So sometimes there are some things that are above you. You may be going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. You may go, be going through um, a, a, a bad breakup. Mm-hmm. Um, you may have gotten so attached to this person. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you say you're getting married. I know I experienced that. Mm-hmm. You're getting married and then all of a sudden this wedding get called off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you may have be, been friends with somebody for years. Yeah. 10, 15, 20 yes. years, and then all of a sudden, okay, that relationship has had its break. Yes. And that's, that's traumatizing. It is. That's a that's a level of trauma. Let's be honest, we it have is. to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's okay mm-hmm. to say, I'm going to invest in myself yes. and go and sit with someone right. and allow them to help me. Right. Because sometimes mm-hmm. their knowledge helps to open up a path in your head yes. and has to see it connect. It's so that's so true. Particularly in the church, we tend to think of getting professional help means you don't have faith. Yeah, yeah. we don't see that. Yeah. The two they actually they, come they together. together. It's just working. Yes. Well, we yes. yeah. But I mean, even Jesus mm-hmm. saw the need for it um, when he sent out his disciples. In there's an account of it in Mark. I think Mark six. Mm-hmm. There's an account of it in Luke ten. Mm-hmm. When he sent the disciples out, he sent them out. He said. He called them, he laid hands on them, mm-hmm. he said, you know, he gave them power and authority over evil spirits. Yeah. Um, power and authority to heal, mm-hmm. power and authority to, to, to do ministry. Right. And he sent them out two by two. Mm-hmm. And then what he did was, he said, okay, I'm sending your eyes out two by two, but don't carry nothing extra. Right. Don't carry a sword, don't carry a extra sandal, don't mm-hmm. carry. Right now, what I want you all to do depend on is yeah. each other mm-hmm. and me. Yeah. The power of God. Wow. So, and then they came back and they talked about how they had um, such some, some miraculous things, the demons were subject to them, mm-hmm. they were able to heal and all that, mm-hmm. but they were able to do such great ministry because mm-hmm. they relied on each other right. and they relied on the Holy Spirit, relied right. on God. Right. So, sometimes we, we want to do things independent of God, yes. which leads us to problems. Yes. Um, we want to do things independent of each other, which again leads us mm-hmm. to problems. Right. We're not maximizing um, what God has intended for us to do. Right, right. So even to even later on in the chapter, that very same chapter, mm-hmm. um, it talks about how I think it's Luke nine. Or, but when he sent them out, they had a a. It's when he fed the the multitude. Mm-hmm. They came because the multitude came because the disciples had went out all over the place mm-hmm. doing all these things and 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 so they the people started to follow behind Jesus mm-hmm. because the disciples right. even even ministry mm-hmm. it, uh, Jesus went in John chapter one John chapter one Jesus did not create um, preach any great sermon he didn't do any uh, any um, miracle until the wedding which is John chapter two mm-hmm. um, when he said. But he had four disciples mm-hmm. in John chapter one. Mm-hmm. Four disciples followed him, followed him, mm-hmm. and he didn't preach a little bit of sermon. They came along because of relationships. Wow. Andrew came along mm-hmm. because of relationships. Mm-hmm. Simon, James, John, they came because of relationship. Right. Right. So So how does my relationship with people, how does that interact with my relationship with God? How are they connected? Because we're talking about three chords. Mm-hmm. How is my relationship with people affecting my relationship with God? And maybe vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, we 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 often think about 
God as an abstract figure floating off in the cosmos. <laughs> you know, the big yeah. white hair, my yeah, right. oh, yeah. the old white dress on. <laughs> yeah, that was the big booby right. dress. Right. Yeah. You know, which is true is an aspect of God. Right. But the Holy Spirit is all God, oh, yes. and the Holy Spirit resides in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. God has placed things inside of you mm -hmm. that would unlock things inside of me when Mary and Elizabeth. When they connected, yeah. there was a leaping of the Holy Spirit because mm -hmm. John and Jesus were filled with the Holy Spirit from in the womb. Wow. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit the Spirit of God connected with the Spirit of God and yeah. in, 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 in Mary connected right. with the Spirit of God and Elizabeth. Right. So there are, there are things that God has placed on the inside of you mm -hmm. that will unlock things on the inside of me and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, even so, and I and, and I just love the story, even the hidden nuggets that God chose about relationships, mm -hmm. even the story of Jesus, when I mentioned the feeding of the, mm -hmm. the multitude, okay. we often talk about how God turned the, the, the bread and the fish, and, and we, we, we emphasize on that. Mm -hmm. There was thousands there, but God said, you know what? I need you to get organized. You all sit in pools of 50. Mm -hmm. He put them in small groups. Mm -hmm. He put them in, 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 in relation with one another. Yeah. So before he fed them, they were, them sitting down in those small groups, sitting down in, and, and then maybe sitting down, the, some Smiths might be been sitting with some Johnsons, yeah. some Johnsons might have been sitting with some Harvards, some, yeah. some Carey, some yeah. Rose. Yeah. You, you know, some <laughs> you know? And, and food, there's some beans can be sitting yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> so, but these groups are sitting mm -hmm. together, but because they have all um, obeyed the commands of God, they right. all turned themselves over to God. Yes. Now it created a place and a, mm -hmm. and, a, and a place where the power of God can now flow. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have individual, our own individual altars, yes. mm -hmm. but there are also corporate altars. Mm -hmm. And and when the the individual is is right with mm -hmm. God, and the the individual altar is right, the corporate altars are that much stronger. Right. Um, even when it talks about the the on the, the in Acts 2, right. in the upper room, mm -hmm. they were all there with one accord. Yes. It, it, this God strategically wrote that piece in there. They were okay. in one place, okay. on one accord, mm -hmm. and then the power of God fell. Yes. So sometimes we may be um, seeing a little trickle of the power of God yes. over here by ourselves, mm -hmm. seeing some over here, some over there, mm -hmm. but we did not come together for their the complete expression of what he wants to do on the earth. Yes. Because we, we, we're not united. He said in John, he said, make them one as you and I are one. And, mm -hmm. and crown them with the same glory that you crowned me with. Yes. That means glory came in connection with unity. Yes. So we, we have glory on the inside of us. And we not only, we not only seek glory, but we have glory. We have yes. glory. Yes. So wow. I've been talking a lot. I'm, I'm not a, I don't have any biological sisters. Mm -hmm. But I have been fortunate enough to be blessed with some ladies that I call my sisters. Yeah. And that is, for me, that is a spiritual connection. Yeah. The beauty of that relation, the relationships with those ladies are, for me, are points in my life when I'm, I'm low mm -hmm. and I don't have to pick up the phone and say it. Mm -hmm. I get a message. Wow. That's the beauty of it. And I think the strength of that is because we have kin spirit. Right. And the Holy Spirit dwell in mm -hmm. all of us. Right. So it may not be that all message at the same time. It right. may just be out of the four and they get a message from one. Yes. But the fact that that one can pick me up, yes. it lets me know how much, how important Holy Spirit is in both of our lives. Wow. Because only Holy Spirit can tell you that. Right. Only Holy Spirit can let you know or say to you, send out your message right now right. or say this and this is happening. Right. Without me even verbalizing what's going on yes. in my life. Yes. So that's, that's why we need Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in our lives, in relationships. Mm -hmm. The beauty of our relationship mm -hmm. is if I'm sitting home and I hear Gilberto, mm -hmm. Send her a message. Hey, mm -hmm. all is well. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of the relationship. Yeah. As much as I love you, mm -hmm. as much as I love you as a person, mm -hmm. the beauty of the relationship comes mm -hmm. up when Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can let me know what's happening with Gabriel mm -hmm. without Gabriel saying a word. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. And sometimes mm -hmm. we are cheated mm -hmm. out of uh, of God moving mm -hmm. this kind of way in our life because we we want to um, we want to judge and we want to say we want to say. Who right. God, who you can use, yeah. and who you cannot use, yeah. so true. and who yeah. we get connect with instead of it being a God or thing, yeah. we make it a, a, a prejudice. A prejudice. Right. We make it a prejudice, even if, and you know, I go going back to scripture and everything. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was going into the town, 
um, several occasions, one where his family was. Mm -hmm. The people were there and they didn't receive Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus could do no great miracles there. Yeah. And what you say, what? Mm -hmm. The Son of God couldn't do no great miracles right. in there mm -hmm. because they had prejudice against him. Right. You know, um, one time when they when they talked about him, they said, isn't this, they, they had this past against him. Mm -hmm. They said, isn't this Joseph's son? Mm -hmm. The carpenter's son? Yeah. The, the one translation takes the word carpenter and says, is this not a, dig, a simple laborer's son? Wow. A simple laborer's son. Mm -hmm. So they classed him mm -hmm. because of his economic status mm -hmm. or his economic background. Wow. So they, they, this, they didn't see the son of God because they was looking at his money mm -hmm. or lack thereof. Wow. And you would be amazed, and we as a church, we as Bahamians, we need to repent mm -hmm. because how many times did we do that? Well, do we do that? Yes, yes. We judge people mm -hmm. on their, their, their social economic mm -hmm. status, on their nationality. Mm -hmm. On another time, they said um, he was going into to, to Samaria, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let him in Samaria because they know that he was heading towards Jerusalem. Yeah. Wow. So they, they, the Bible says his face was set towards Jerusalem, meaning yes. he was mm -hmm. going to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the Samaritans, because of their prejudice against the Jews, mm -hmm. and, and, and the Jesus was welcome, he's going to be. We have no problem with Jesus, mm -hmm. but we don't like them Jews. Mm -hmm. um, but boy, Jesus is a Jew. <laughs> right, <laughs> it, it, right. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh -huh. All of us, all of us are human. All of us, are, uh, all of us came from us the same Adam. Mm -hmm. All of us had the same Jesus mm -hmm. died for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. so true. But we judge because you hate him, because you poor Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. But we love Puerto Ricans. We didn't like skin. Yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. hell. Pretty hell. Yeah. 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 yeah, You know, um, even now too, uh, and that's changing. We we have um, we have prejudice against Chinese and mm -hmm. Filipinos because yeah. they're coming into the Bahamas. Right. And so now we say, oh, we're seeing them as taking jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing that. We're seeing everybody through that lens mm -hmm. when it's not necessarily yeah. so. Uh -huh. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so we, we need to know that allow God to set into your life. Yeah. He's who we will. Yeah. You know, we have this big unrest going on. As a time of recording, we have big unrest going on in the United States, mm -hmm. primarily France, mm -hmm. all of it because of the color of people's skin right. has been discriminated against for so long. Yes. We as the church, we as, as decent human beings, yes. should not see skin color but see God, the God in the person. Yes. We should see you for the creation that God has made you right. and celebrate that. Right. And, and, you know, and too long, we have been divided. And because we've divided, mm -hmm. we've been weak. Right. Because the, the very the scripture we started off with says mm -hmm. that, that the, the one had that they, they, they are harder to fight against because they're united, because they, they, they have the cords, mm -hmm. the three, four cords not easily broken. Right. But we allow, because I don't like the way you look, or I don't like your nationality right. to, the, to determine yeah. if we're going to be a three, four cord. Yeah. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we've been isolated, we've been separated. Mm -hmm. And Jesus didn't die for the rich, yes. and he didn't die for the white, mm -hmm. he didn't die for the black, mm -hmm. he didn't die for the behemoth as much as the behemoth stinks. So yeah. He died for us <laughs> all, everyone. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, we have to allow, and even so too, sometimes when we get out of the socio-economical thing, mm -hmm. sometimes we discriminate because of the things on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. say, okay, you know what? Um, like how the fellas say, they say, isn't the sisters and brothers among us? Mm -hmm. Then we do we, isn't the sisters married to our people? Yeah. We judge because of familiarity and because of people's yeah. parts. Very true. Their, their past connections, because we are so familiar with you that we cannot see you mm -hmm. as someone God is using. Yes. We see you as Gilberta, as Gilberta, who used to withdraw stuff in the yard, yeah. and who didn't want to come inside, and, you yeah, know? Right. That kind of thing. Right. And, 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 and just allow God right. to be God, you know right. what I'm saying? I realized, um, when Audrey started to talk about her sisters, I realized that women, it seems as though, I could be wrong, we tend to connect easier or differently. Um, in your personal experience, how has being a male, maybe a healthy relationship affected you, or maybe you having a healthy relationship with someone else affected them? What are some of the benefits as a male having healthy relationships around you? Um, I tend to be a stubborn person. Okay. Which is a good thing about it. I didn't want to say anything. Oh, no. <laughs> I tend to be, let's just say something, headstrong. Yeah, um, When I have, <laughs> when I have, um, 
My convictions. Mm -hmm. I um, me and my convictions, we go tooth and nail with my convictions. Mm -hmm. And um, what has helped me is because having people in my life because of my background, mm -hmm. um, someone else may see it from a different perspective mm -hmm. and allow me to 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 not be so handcuffed to my past mm -hmm. and my preferences yes. and my way of doing things. Right. That to not hear God, you wow. know. Yeah. To, to hear, to allow God to be able right. to speak even through someone else. Yes. The Bible says, out of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Mm, so they give another witness to yes. even what God is saying on the inside that I may be too stubborn to hear. Yes. And, and sometimes, even we as males and as leaders, mm -hmm. we, may, we may be stubborn, mm -hmm. be, and we may, the society may call us stubborn, mm -hmm. but we may need to be that way because we need to be pillars. Right. We need to be staunch and we need to be. Um, to, to, to carry the weight of a family, yeah. to carry the weight of, of, of whatever's going on mm -hmm. in society and where right. we can place. Right. But we need to be flexible enough to allow mm -hmm. Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to deal with us and to move, you know. Yes. And then we have this thing where we're not emotional as women. Yes. So we don't we don't do touchy feely uh, right. you know, like, <laughs> we'll be like, hey, going on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like how women will be like, girl, you look good. And we just talk all day. All day. All day, all day. <laughs> We might be like, well, it's in fresh Jordans, but, you know, we, <laughs> we, or, or, you know, we, 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 we talk about things, we won't personalize it to the person. Mm. So sometimes we disconnect in the relationships, yes. but if we realize, too, that some relationships we form are formed so organically, yeah. that God has to almost sneak them into us, mm. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And, and we are sometimes, even in the church, mm -hmm. we are scared to let people know. Like, you know, oh yeah, I'm feeling my, I'm feeling my best right now. Yes. Know? I'm feeling 100 mm. or whatever, you know, because we are taught to suppress feelings. Yes. And which is true. Yes. Because you're not ruled by feelings. You're not mm. ruled by your, your, your feelings. Your feelings are, are subject and mastered by you. Mm -hmm. But also your feelings, are, that still doesn't make them, negate them from your life. And yes. you're servitude to God. Right. That's why God says, um, when we talked about earlier about, um, the greatest commandment. Yes. It says, "With all serve him with your soul, and the soul is, is the seed of emotions and our feelings. Mm -hmm. So your your feelings are there in servitude to God and yes. servitude to you. Yes. They are not to be served by you." Yes. Wow, awesome. Okay, so we are about to wrap up. So I just want to give you guys the floor if you want to add any final thoughts, anything. I I just wanted to share one of my favorite, and I think that has built me into the person I am today. Relationship for me, and, and this is this is definitely a prayer for me, for persons that I come in contact with, is I have, I have been fortunate enough to have a mother and a father mm -hmm. that was, uh, people would say that I spoiled, but I, I, I don't say spoiled, <laughs> I would just say extremely blessed. Yeah. Um, but they was they were so intentional about ensuring that um, their relationship remained whole at the front of me. Mm -hmm that I think can help me, even as an individual, to, to know the importance of being a whole person. Right. Um, and then our relationship, my relationship with my dad, anybody that knows me knows me and my dad. Father's Day coming up, it was always a difficult week for me, mm -hmm. especially Father's Day. Mm -hmm. My relationship with my dad was like the, the foundation wow. of my life, wow. to the point that I see so much of my husband in him, mm. so much of him now looking at my husband. Right. Like I can see the correlation, I realize, okay, I kind of married my dad. <laughs> it's just a different shade of God. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. Right. But then there are some, there are still, like, then there are some stuff in him that right and that I never, that I wish I would have seen in my dad. Mm. So I think for me, I love the fact and I honor the Lord that I had the opportunity of coming up in a home mm. where I was able to see to a healthy husband yeah. and wife. Yeah. I saw them communicate with one another. I, I'm not that fortunate to say that I didn't see them fuss, mm -hmm. or they fuss. Right. I saw them disagree, mm -hmm. but yet I saw them, I saw the, how they moved from disagreement into, okay, now we forgive them. Right. Yeah. I saw that. So it taught me that, and right. I didn't know that I was learning it. Wow. So it wasn't until after getting married, and when we had our different disagreements, or you know, you don't agree on everything mm -hmm. and all the different kind of stuff, and I was able to quickly catch myself even after moments of okay, I see, what do you want me to do, whatever. Yeah. 
I quickly was able to catch myself because my image of my childhood came back mm. to me. So I, I thank God that that was my foundation. Right. That aspect of a healthy relationship was my foundation. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing, that my mother and I, our relationship, and when I was younger, because my mom worked so much, mm-hmm. she was a customer, she's a customer, she is a customs officer, and at that point she was working a lot of overtime. So me and my dad relationship was stronger mm-hmm. as a child, believe it or not. As I got older, mm-hmm. as an adult, my mother and I got extremely close. Wow. So I have that girlfriend within my mom mm-hmm. that we can sit down and actually really talk about anything, right. and then we can talk about actually the mother and daughter thing too. Right. So I think I, I I pray that persons those who would watch if you would watch it as we yeah. aired or you would watch the replay know that having that kind of healthy relationship is so important. Yeah. If you're not as fortunate to have it in a home, mm-hmm. ask the Lord to send that type of person into yeah. your life. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm blessed that even after my dad passing, I have some other amazing men in my mm-hmm. life yeah. who has, you know, just taken up the role. When things happen, even with us, you know, we've been without a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And when we need stuff, you know, I, I can pick up the phone, yeah. hey, mm-hmm. I just need an apple. Yeah. Or you could get the phone to this person, the next mm-hmm. person, and it's just such a blessing to wow. see that. So we need relationships. Right. And we need to know that it's okay. Let me say this again. It's okay to be vulnerable. Yes. You have to yes. in order for you to be able to gain all mm-hmm. that the relationship has to offer for you. Yes. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. just to pick you back on the end that you just mm-hmm. said, the Bible says, if you want a friend, you must first show yourself friendly. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you have to be vulnerable to put yourself out there. Right. But this is my point that I want to, to piggyback. Um, there's a scripture that the Lord has been, been dealing with me with a lot. Um, the past couple of days, and you know, it says, except it's in Psalms, except the Lord build a house, mm-hmm. they labor in vain that build it, mm-hmm. and except the Lord build a relationship, they labor in vain mm-hmm. that build that relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we have to now allow the Lord to set out the criteria of who is now in our relationship spheres, mm-hmm. which level are they up to. We all have to allow the Lord to ordain these things instead of yes. our own preferences, mm-hmm. our own prejudice, yes. our own um, ideas of things, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Well, just because such and such is so and so, right. we feel like we need to be you know, connected to them. Mm-hmm. No, accept the Lord build it. Mm-hmm. Allow the Lord to build it. Even though you put yourself and you, sh- and you, you, you do the necessary effort, mm-hmm. allow God to bring people into your life. Allow mm-hmm. God to... Not even just bring the people into your life, but establish the criteria for the relationships. Yeah. Sometimes we have some criteria that um, the Bible says don't be unequal, um, don't be unequally yoked. Mm-hmm. But we want to um, bring people into our lives mm-hmm. who, who don't know God, who mm-hmm. don't know our, our 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 place, our background mm-hmm. in God. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we want to put them in places so deep and mm-hmm. so entrenched. Mm-hmm. You know, but. We have to allow God to set out our criteria for who and how these relationships that we have in our lives and how these cords are built. Yes. You know, because at the end of it all, even though we may have the cords and the cords may form a rope, but He's the anchor here at all. Wow. And, and He's the one that keeps us stable and steady. And He's the one that, that, that holds us together. Yes. So we need to allow God, mm-hmm. and I keep, I keep hammering on this, allow God. To, to set out our relationships mm-hmm. and set out our criteria for relationships. You know, mm-hmm. I can't just say, you know, I'm not gonna be cool with you because you like to wear yellow. And I don't, <laughs> I, had a bad, I had a bad experience with yellow in my past, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you know, there are things that the triggers yeah. and, and things that people have, and you know, and sometimes people help us to identify and address these things, right. you know? Um, there's some people, you know, who some males, the minute they get some success, mm-hmm. They want to marry a bright woman with long hair. Mm-hmm. And it, so why are you attracted to that? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is it because you have an image of yourself? Mm-hmm. You see that um, because you're dark skinned or whatever, that's success to you. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, so to, um, to buy a Honda ride around right. and get a, a, a red girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just yes, simple, simple things. Yeah, or, yeah, right. or some females, it's, it's, it's a different thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, so right. they, they want a thug. Right. That's the image of the perfect guy, right. you know, or what, whatever it is, right. you know, I'm just going in different spheres of relationship, mm-hmm. but we have to now allow God to ordain and bring 
people into our lives and relationships into our lives according to his criteria. Yeah. And let him be the foundation of it all. Right. If you build build up from him as a foundation, you do good. But if you try to build a friendship on any other foundation, mm -hmm. it's bound to crumble. Yeah. And I want to, I know we have to go, but I just want to tie on to the, um, if the Lord builds a house, something Holy Spirit just remind me of as a child as well. One of the things that I, I would say that my parents said that I think shaped me even the more was they took me to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Um, they created a personal altar at home. I saw my my mom and my dad in prayer at home. Um, some persons know my story where when I would be at my grandmother's house, I saw my grandmother at 12 o'clock every day. I could remember the clockwork. It was prayer time. Mm -hmm. We had to stop at home to no, it, it isn't a fact that she's going in to pray. We going in to pray with her. Mm -hmm. You don't sit out in the front room and watch TV. We're all going in to pray. And I think we have to understand that all of this is a form of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. We sometimes leave the children out. Yeah. And so our children end up forming sometimes mm -hmm. toxic relationships as yeah. a result of what we would have passed on to them in the home. Okay. So because my mom and my dad, they were intentional on showing me what proper relationship looked like. They were intentional on showing me what the God relationship was. Mm -hmm. They were intentional on putting that God factor on the inside of me. It allowed me now that I have such a love for young people, I have such a love for children, that I, I want them to know God. I, I need you to know God. So, you know, let's not forget that our relationship with the children in our life are also just as important as these kind of relationships. Yes. Yeah. Let's not ignore those little people yeah. and figure, well, okay, you can't talk. No, 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 let's sit down and have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you, as the, 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 the man, as soon as they start being able to say, as, as, as backward as it is, there's, there's this young lady, um, and I don't know, Sean she would mind me calling her name, Sean Ashley. She has... She has a baby girl, and listen, I get off. I just, I just, I just go looking for her stances uh -huh. to watch the little clips of her and them two having conversations. Wow. And wow. They sing it and they worship it together because that is a seed that she is sowing. Yes, yeah. in that child, uh -huh. that girl, girl, that baby girl will never forget these yes. moments. It will stick with her because she's so insane now. Yeah. Um. So let's not forget. So it's okay. Sit down and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Ask them. You know, how do you feel about this? Yeah. If you and your spouse have a disagreement in front of your children, you need to talk to them about that. Yes. That's a cord. Yeah. Because indirectly, you're damaging their cord mm -hmm. with opposite sex yeah. and with God. But if my parents is a Christian and they row and like that, yeah. they don't understand it. The Let's have that conversation. Mm -hmm. These teenagers have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. they, they need to understand and know, you know, as a part of being married, as a part of being with someone, as a part of being a friend with somebody, we would disagree. Mm -hmm. That don't mean I don't like them. Yes. That don't mean I hate them or wish them harm. Yes. So let's include the little people. Yeah, because yeah, even as young as as young as it, you're my best friend no more. You're yeah. best friend. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. Because you don't you don't want to do you don't want to do what I want to do. You want right. to play, yes. play what I want to play. Right. Right. I play with right. you no more. Which is actually a form of manipulation. Right. Yeah. Which is toxic, right? Yeah. And so, so we need to give them healthy views, yeah. So they don't they don't precipitate and they don't push back, put um carry on unhealthy and toxic practices yeah. into their adulthood, yeah. in, yeah. in, in their life, wow. you know. And you know, sometimes we 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 the parents, we the the adults are at fault when they yeah. see us um fake smile on your face and yeah. then talk about you behind and your back and they hear everything. And they hear and they was they sponges, they yes. just pick up everything. Yes. So now we now have to put on we don't have to put on the act, we have to put on God for them. Yes. Yes. We have to allow them to see so the God in us that's all the time, point blank, period, because that's what's gonna precipitate and go forward. Mm -hmm. So even I don't know how we get into dealing with mm -hmm. with children, but we need to even have a healthy relationship with children. Yeah. And and, and and allow our children to know. That healthy relationship is what is is what's your 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 goal in life. You know what I'm saying? Not just a relationship, healthy. but healthy relationships. Yes, that's good. All right, good guys. We covered so many different layers tonight on relationships. Listen, if you know someone that needs to have this, be sure to click the share button. Thank you guys for tuning into the den. We'll be back next week this time with our finale for this season, as well as this Thursday at six a.m. Join us for morning devotions with Thank you for joining us. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.